okay in previous videos of information link we have seen how do we bring all the columns or default information model and how do we bring limited columns from the table in the database okay now in this video we are going to see how do we bring the limited rows or basically filter out the rows or you can simply say adding a where clause in the query right so this will be very similar to this okay so this time we want to bring all the columns but the number of rows we are going to limit with a filter saying that where the product id is less than 500 okay so that's what we are going to see so if you see the total number of products that i have is like 504 but then when i add a filter i will have less number of rows here so 176 rows and let's see how do we create this query in the information designer in spot file so we will go here right uh, since we already have all the columns we had created the query for all the columns we will reuse that i mean you can skip that part if you want to reuse it or if you want to create you can follow along here so to do that we can quickly create an information links with all the columns so we already have the column elements ready so we'll just select this and create an information link and instead of passing the columns one by one we can directly pass the complete folder and here you go okay so now what i'll do is we will save this and we will save this inside the information link folder we will call it as uh, filtered products okay and we'll just save it here so now you see we have our information link ready okay but right now if i open this as it is it will open all the data okay it has loaded all the rows so now we need to apply a filter to it so there are two ways of applying the filter i'll first show you without editing the query and then second i'll tell you how to do this by editing the query so for beginners it is fine to create a filters and then use it but then as you advance it is uh, i personally feel it is easier to just directly go and update the query i'll tell you the both ways uh, it is up to you which is more prefer i mean which is more suitable for you okay so we will go to the start and you see this time we will not create a column element we will create a filter element right this time we will create a filter element so i will go to the filter element now I want to have a filter on product ID, right? I want to have a filter. I want to have a filter on product ID. So I will bring in the product ID column from the database. Okay. I'll go here. I'll go to the production. I'll go to the respective table. Basically, I'll say product and for the product ID, I want it to be greater than 500. I want it to be greater than 500 then i'll save as and i'll save this as a filter in my filter folder and i'll say product uh, production dot product dot product id uh, greater than 500 okay and then I'll save this so now you see I have a filter element right earlier I had all the columns element but now you see I have a filter element which you can see has an icon of a funnel okay now what I'll do is I'll just go to this go to my information link again which I had created and then add this filter element okay and I'll save this and now if I open the data you will see the number of rows has been decreased to uh, 238 here i had taken product id less than 500 that's why it was 176 my bad i can get by greater than 500 so for greater than 500 i will have 328 rows and here you have 328 rows now if you go to the sql you see basically you have actually added the same thing product id greater than 500 so the query where product id is greater than 500 right so this is how you do it by creating the filter element i'll just show you the steps again what you do is I'll remove it from here so what you do is uh, okay you go to the filter there you go to the data source tab inside the data source tab go to the respective column on which you want to apply filter and then select that and then you will be able to create a filter element okay while creating a filter element define the value that you want to add and then save as a filter element okay now once you have the filter element ready go to your information link where you want to add that filter and just pass that filter here and your filter is ready 
and you can save this and then open the data so you will have the filter applied to your data or basically it will add a where clause in your query now the second method is if you are familiar with the sql and you know how to write a where clause instead of going through all the process of creating a filter element and then adding it to a query it's easier that i can go to the let's say i want i can go to my default query where i have all the products and then i can just go to the sql and say where uh, i can just copy the name from here the same thing control c and control v and say product id greater than 500 so basically the point is i can uh, you can remove this condition for now okay and then just say okay and save and open the data so you see now this is also will bring you again 328 rows at the bottom okay so both of them will give you the same result just that in in the first method you have to create the filter element and then add it to your information link in the second method we have directly edited the sql query now you can find it easier to edit the sql query directly because it is just you go here and then edit it but if you have the same filter being used in multiple tables okay then if i have defined the filters in the sql i'll have to go through all the information links all the 10 different information links and go to the sql and then change that where clause but suppose i have used the filters then i'll just click here and instead of changing it in every query i can just here come here and save it and then it will be automatically applied to all the 10 queries or all the 10 information links right so it depends like how you want to use it and when to use it uh, so i hope it was helpful and uh, depending upon your use case you can directly edit the query or, or if you find it better to create an filter element go with that process now let's assume you want to apply two filters okay so example instead of one filter which will give you 328 rows let's apply two filters one filter is on product id and the second filter is on the list price so if i execute this you will see that i get 112 rows 112 rows so how do we do this again both the methods so we can create two different filter elements and then use them into the query so one we already have it second we can create it so let's go here and let's go to let's say we want to have another filter element we'll go to the start we'll say another filter element we want it on the list price and list price should be greater than 700 right so that's what we are doing here product id greater than 500 and the list price should also be greater than 700 so i'll say greater than 700 and i'll save as okay uh save as uh, filter or maybe i'll just use this one and instead of product id we are using list price okay list price greater than 500 and then save it here so now you see in my elements i have two filters so now i can simply go here in my filter product i can just add one so i already have this query and then i can add the list box as well okay so now you see my sql query will be simply combining two of them and then click ok and then save and then open data I don't want to save the previous dxp so now you see i have 112 rows so that is one way of doing it okay now but you see we have created two different filters right what if you want to combine both of the filters into a single filter element right so we can do that as well you can just say filter element uh, again select your tables or select the columns that you want to have so we will go let's say uh product and we'll say product id filter and then we want to have we also want to have a filter on list price okay so this one is you see percentage one and percentage two so we'll say percentage one greater than 500 and uh percentage two uh greater than 700 right so this is like you have combined both the filters into a single filter element and i can save and i can go here and uh, go to the filter elements and then maybe i'll say okay uh, 
I'll just say for now price list price and product ID filter. Okay, I'll just remove this like this. Okay, and that should be fine. Save, and you see I have one filter here. Okay, so this one. So now what I'll, I can do is instead of using two different filters at the bottom, I can remove them to different one and add this a single one. Okay, but the result will again be the same. You see, same thing that we have achieved through different one. So basically, point is you can play around with the filters in any way you want. You can go with the and or combination two or three filters combined together and everything however you want to play with it with some like operations and all those stuff also you can put it there and same thing if you want to do it directly in the query you can just open this one and just go here sql and then again put the same thing right and let's say product one dot list price okay let's say product one dot list price okay is uh, greater than 700 okay and then you save it and then you open the data and you will get the same thing you see 112 rows right same thing so this is all about the filters i mean uh, you can play with it a bit more but this will cover more than 90% uh, of your use cases okay and so that's all about the filters information links you can play with it a bit more here and there you can tweak it a bit more but this will cover most of your basic use cases and uh, i hope you find it useful and if so don't forget to like and subscribe the video and see you in the next video where we will talk about the other elements so take care bye bye and see you in the next video